America, you disappointed me. Hey y'all, it's your girl IJF. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Aqua Discourse, where we embrace the beauty of uncomfortable conversations. <sighs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. America, you disappointed me. I mean, you really did. You disappointed me. Anywho, uh, hello from the U.S. Yes, check on us. I mean, there's way more important things going on in the world right now, but my God, uh, we're going to get there. But anyway, let me just give you guys a little check-in with me. Um, I got my hair done. I look mad cute. Um, no, but New York is giving fall, winter, a little bit of everything, you know? So, you know, it's... The jackets are about to start coming out. I'm about to start getting my my layers up, okay? Um, work is good. Work is the same. Um, a little more money would be nice, but, you know, we're not even going to overstep our boundaries. But life is good thus far. Um, I am in the works of seriously, and I do mean it this time. I'm really in the works of <clears throat> looking for a DP, a cinematographer, so... If you are that person or you know someone who is, please let them know my information. I'm going to put it all in the comments below. And of course, I'm going to put it at the bottom of the screen. But yes, email me. If you're a first time, you know, cinematographer, please reach out to me. I'm a first time writer, director, actor, because, you know, I ain't got no money. So I got to be a little bit of everything. So if you're willing to work with me, um, I promise once I do get some money, I will hire you. I promise. Pinky promise on that. But um, on all serious, um, I mean, seriously speaking, um, yeah. So if you are a cinematographer, please, please, please reach out to me if you can. Or if you want to be a part of my project, it is going to be a um, a season. It's like a it's, it's going to be a six part series, so a six episode series. And hopefully, a few networks start hitting us up. Too ambitious, maybe. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Again, um, if you are a U.S. citizen and you went out there and vote and life didn't go as planned. Hey, it is what it is. For me, it, it was heartbreaking, but again, <sighs> that's neither here or there. Let's start with Quincy Jones. Um, Quincy Jones, the icon, the legend, the renaissance man, born and raised um, from Chicago, who, I mean, I don't know how to start with Quincy Jones. I feel like he was such a hidden figure for me growing up when I was younger, but then when I started to know that he's a producer, a writer, a director, I mean, everything that's usually black and iconic in America has a little bit of Quincy Jones sprinkled into it, you know, from the Diana Rosses to the Michael Jacksons to their music, their writing, their sounds, their uh, thriller, their directions. I mean, he's a legend. I mean, he died at 91, so R.I.P., right? Um, he is a little messy, but that's not what the... Sh channel was about but um Quincy Jones was very much uh controversial sometimes um and it's not because he dated a white woman that's okay um but it's like some of the stuff that he said and things of that nature but um he's a human you know he lived until he was 91 you're gonna say some crazy stuff right um but yeah shout outs to Quincy Jones and um hopefully we can leave that much of a greatness behind, and you know, if we're lucky, right? Fingers crossed. But yeah, I uh, wanted to get that out the way before we start getting in, because I'm about to dig in. It's been a while. I missed y'all. I don't know if you guys missed me. I don't know if y'all watching, but I'm here. Okay. DDG and Halle Bailey. So yesterday, I guess Halle Bailey kind of went on Twitter to express her disappointment in, um, I guess, her child's father bringing him on Kostanat. Am I pronouncing his name right? Kostanat's like streaming channel. And if you don't know anything about Kostanat, I didn't know much about him too because you know I'm a little old. But my siblings watch him. He is just like this big... Uh, he's from New York. I think he's from the Bronx. He's, I think, Caribbean. I don't know if he's Haitian or Jamaican. Someone please check my stuff. I don't know. Um, it was just a little quick little research. A little quick, quick, quick. A little quick, quick, quick research that I did. But I know he's from New York. He's 22. Um, he's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, the one and only biggest streamers on Twitch. Um, and 
he's a black guy. He's a black boy making it in this world. And I wish nothing but the best for him. But anyway, DDG, I guess, is another YouTuber. I don't know much about him like that. I think my siblings watch him too. I'm not too sure. I have young, like, Gen Z siblings. That's not like my siblings. But yeah, I'm a millennial. I'm mature. I don't do that. But yeah, so anyway, DDG is another YouTuber. But as you guys know, he was dating Hallie like a while back. And a lot of people disapprove of it for me as an outsider looking in. I didn't, it's like I'm indifferent, but I totally understand like we are the aunties and me creeping up on auntie age was like, mm, you know what I mean? Because we want the best for people that we've seen grow up in. I always want the best for little black girls who are going to become black women, right? So, um, yeah, again, I didn't disapprove of the relationship because who the hell am I? But I'm just like, sister, you do better than that. Sorry. But, hey, who gives a damn? It, it ain't about me. But moving on, um, I guess Hallie saw her son or her baby on the stream or online and expressed online that she doesn't feel comfortable with her child being someplace that hasn't been told to her. So this is her exact, her exact tweet was, hi everyone. Just so you know, I am out of town and I don't approve of my baby being on a stream tonight. I wasn't told or notified and I'm extremely upset to have my baby in front of millions of people. I am his mother and protector and saddened that I wasn't notified, especially when I'm out of town. I'm not going to lie. If I had a baby, I will feel the same way. Just let me know where my baby is going. I, I mean, everyone has their own opinions on this, but this is my channel. What's good? Um, I felt like, um, yeah, if you're taking my baby somewhere, especially if they're going to be in, uh, if they're going to be in front of cameras, right? It's going to be monetary. There's going to be a commodity being made. I need to know that my baby is going. I need to know and I need to approve of it. Again, some people have made the argument that the guy, DDG, is the dad. He's a really good dad on camera, which he is. You know, I, I love the interaction. Like, I don't watch them, but I see TikTok cl clips, and it is really cute that they make this baby just... And it's such a chill baby. The baby just be like, okay, I'm here, whatever. But, yeah, anyway, again, a lot of people were going against Hallie because they said that she was using, like, a lot of, like, I guess strong language such as you know she's a protector she's his mother and I feel like what a lot of people are forgetting in this I guess Twitter post is she's saying that she wasn't notified like she wasn't she didn't she wasn't in the known of where her baby was going to be and then poop he pops up on TV or like a streaming network I think anybody who's logistically thinking would be like yeah I wouldn't want that either you know and at the end of the day Hallie boo boo you are with a YouTuber. I mean, and I'm pretty sure you know what his YouTube was about because you were incorporated in this YouTube. So I don't know if you guys had a conversation about maybe not doing too much with the baby because you are on a different scale than him. Let's just keep it a buck. You are, you've been in with, you've been hanging out with Oprah Winfrey. I mean, if, when you meet Oprah Winfrey and Beyonce, girl, come on, that's like, that's like one of the, those two women are the two black gods of blackness. Hello? But anyway, um, no shade to DDG, but boy, we don't know you like that. Hey, shout outs to you, boo. Um, but anyway, I wasn't hating on their love. I don't care. Let people be and do what they want as long as they're safe and kind to one another. You know, do your thing. But um, moving for on, I was going to say Hallie, sis, you knew what you were getting into. Unfortunately, it sucks. To me, it kind of sounds like when, uh, I mean, I agree with Hallie, by the way. So I'm just saying, sis, I'm, I'm going to tug on your wig a little bit to let you know that. Oh, let me lower, lower this down. Let me lower this down a little bit. Can y'all see my face? <laughs> Get this big old black mic out of my face. <laughs> anyway, um, Hallie, I'm on your side. But again, you had to know what you were getting into. And I was going to say, I'm kind of comparing this to like when Kanye West was going off online like a few years back about how his kids are incorporated on like social media. Buddy, do you not know what you married into? Like, do you, you knew who you married. That's why you married her, right? Or did you forget that part or cut that part off in your brain that she 
she came up on, you know, a little bit of something like this. You know what I mean? I didn't watch. I was too small. I don't know. Ugh. No, thank you. But, um, yeah, uh, I know that's an extreme comparison. And Hallie and DDG, in my opinion, are a little more classier than that trust. But I do feel like um, as parents, just talk about everything. DDG, I mean, it is what it is. It's your child. It's her child. But there needs to be a compromise. If you're going to go places with this baby, tell the mom. I mean, who knows? She probably would have said, nah, I don't want him on camera. And that may be not what he wanted to hear, but I think that this needs to be an understanding. Um, I don't think she feels like the baby's in bad hands because clearly he's not. But I think sometimes, I guess, Hallie wants certain things to be private and, you know, some things to be cherished. And I'm assuming she just doesn't want her child to be on camera all the time. And people, like I said, were saying, oh, at least on TikTok, I'm not on Twitter like that. They was like, oh, she shows her baby all the time. But that's on her accord. That's on her account. That's when she wants to do it. Not when someone takes your child behind your back and they're using your child in the way that you would use your child. You know what I mean? Like taking pictures, video content. So y'all not making no sense, at least to me. But some of y'all didn't grow up with good mothers, so you wouldn't know. She followed it up with, um, as a woman experiencing several postpartums, there are boundaries that I wish to be respected. Nobody knows what someone is going through until they snap. Like I said, um, she just wants to know where she wants to know where her baby is at at all times as much as possible, right? Um, and she said she was out of town, so she couldn't probably come right or you know drive over and like get my baby. So after this happened, I guess people started coming at her, you know, waywards. So she disabled her account, um, and then people were saying that there's a video content of her you know, child's father and Kai basically looking at like a TV screen and saying, "Oh, that's weird." saying that it probably was a, it was implying that Haley's tweets were weird. And then later on, like I said, she disabled her account, but then she came back on saying that she felt like maybe she was doing a bit much. But in my opinion, I don't think you were doing a bit much. I think I'm not a mom. I'm a big sister. I'm a dog mom. And I already feel that type of love and protection about people that I care for, things that I love. So I can only imagine, like, when I do pop out my own kid, how protective I'm going to be about my child. And I don't care if I look like I'm doing too much over my kid. I don't... I think when it comes to that type of love and that type of um, connection, there's really no boundaries, unfortunately, right? You know, a lot of people are willing to, you know, unalive people for their loved ones, like their children. Um, like she said, you don't want her to snap. So, you know... Yeah, coming at home, girl, saying that she's in the wrong, but Hallie, I don't think you're in the wrong, but the only thing is when you bring things to the internet, it stinks. Yeah, it becomes everybody's business, and then it becomes a cesspool of opinions that nobody asked for. You know what I mean? Like, we all love a little, little tea, girl. Poor, poor. But... <laughs> we don't want people in our business. I mean, I get mad when my mom tell my business to my family members. So imagine, like, the world, the globe seeing it. Like, it's like more, it's just, it's just more pressure. So I would say if you don't want to go through that again, um, yeah, maybe text your boo thing, call him, call his mama and them, call his family. He seemed like he has a big family and a good family source. Call them up. Call them up and let them know how you feel and that you saw something that made you uncomfortable. And, you know, obviously you can't take it back. He can't go back in the past and remove the baby from the stream. The next thing is just moving forward. Just let me know what the deal is, you know, what the day is, where you guys are going. So I could just check in. I could be aware, you know. Like I said, I would be terrified if I don't have my child there with people that I trust, but then I see them like on a public platform it's like seeing my child on tv or like i don't know just on youtube somewhere like that's it's like yeah where is my baby it's over it's a click click bang bang oh let me no no, no. I, i'm not saying i'm pew pewing any of you people don't come for me do not come for me but i'll be irritated i'll be irated i'll be a lot of things okay so um Haley, girl you ain't do nothing wrong i just think you know as you learn, like all human beings, you might just have to stay off the internet a little more in that capacity. 
but I'm here for you and everything else. Like your movies, your songs. I love it. Oh yeah, and side note, Carsonette sent baby toys, I guess, to um DDG's baby. I don't know the child name. Forgive me. I don't know, but he's really, really cute. I've always seen him in memes, but he sent toys to the baby. And I'm just like, this is so cute. I love seeing the that's what I like to see of black men, you know, them taking care of their kids, having fun, sending baby toys or packages to their friends who have kids. It just shows care. And I, I love, love, love that, especially when we live in a world where all they want to do is paint, you know, black boys in a certain manner, in a certain light. And it's just like, they're not like us. Y'all don't even know what's like y'all think y'all do, but you know, good luck trying to. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next topic, okay? Let's talk about Queen Keisha Cole. I love, 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 love Keisha Cole. Um, but I also want to give her credit for being just so stupid all the time when it comes to love. So Keisha Cole has been dating this supposed 25-year-old. I'm, well, I'm going to say allegedly because nobody ain't going to sue me. I ain't got money anyway. So I'm going to give you my debt if you ever sue me. You can have the debt. But anyway, so Keisha Cole was supposedly dating or allegedly dating this 25-year-old rapper named Honcho. She even got his real name, Muhammad, tatted on her. And she's 42, by the way. I mean, okay. But one thing about Keisha Cole, I don't know what it is about her, but she stayed with men a little too young. Like, if she was a guy, we would be disgusted by her. I mean... We would also think that it's typical, right? Because men do that, and it's so normal in societies to see men dating younger women. But, And I'm not against women dating younger men. That's none of my business. What I'm against is dating a younger man that's embarrassing you. Like, now she's supposedly single. Not too long ago, he bought her a car, and they were together. Like, is this a publicity? publicity? That's what I get for talking shit. I don't know if this is a stunt or what, but... Well, I'm hoping it is a stunt so I can take back my words, but I feel like this is her real life. I mean, Keisha Cole is ghetto. It is what it is. I, I'm, I'm ghetto, too. We all ghetto. Everybody's ghetto in our own way. But Keisha Cole is, you know, sell fish plates, take shoes off, fight barefoot type of girl. Yeah, you Keisha know Cole, I mean? you're, um, you're sick. You're sick. Um, again, if I was seeing a 42-year-old man and a 25-year-old woman, um, I don't know. I don't think I would care because, again, 25 is grown. It's not the grownest, but it's grown. And 42, obviously, is grown. But I feel like they're both adults. But obviously, because of the age, there's a little, mm, little discrepancy. Like, you know, maybe the one who's older got a little more life experience and probably is playing the younger person. I don't know about y'all, but I've dated people who are older than me. And um, after the whole ordeal, I'm just like, oh my God, they were playing me like a fiddle. But unfortunately, sometimes that's how it goes. Um, but in this scenario, again, I really don't like rooting for these young little rappers anyway, these YNs, like, Ugh. but I feel like Keisha Cole, like, it's the same story with you, sis. It's like, well, and it's, it's not that she's she's bad because Keisha Cole has dated men her age, I'm assuming, allegedly. Like, supposedly she dated Birdman. Why would anyone date Birdman? I would only hope for the money. And if you're not there for the money, you need to have a psychiatrist called on you. Whoever is checking people's brains, that's what you need. Um, but back to what I was saying, yeah, um... Keisha Cole, again, I don't care that, that you're dating younger. You've always done that. You're always going to do that. I just hope you don't just leave your kids' friends alone, you know, because, again, you look like the older you get, the younger they'll get. You know, you'll be on some, you know, share, maybe. Who knows? But I just hope that you're not embarrassing yourself later on. You know, you're 42. You're, I'm sorry. You're almost half a century years old, so... You need to tighten up, boo. Tighten up. And I know, you know, if you know anything about Keisha Cole, I'm a big Keisha Cole fan. I mean, what black millennial girl isn't? Um, I used to watch her show, Frankie and Neffy and them. I used to love that show. It was so realistic. And it was just so like, I don't know. It gave me a different look at people from like other parts of the world, like Oakland. Like I've, I had never heard of an Oakland in my life. The only thing I knew about California was Los Angeles. I think like most 
New Yorkers. I mean, again, I was younger. I was like eight, nine, ten. But when that show came on, that's when I know knew that there was an Oakland. It's mostly black. Some people come from you know a, a impoverished side of that area. Not that that's all that it is, but some people grew up a little tougher than others, like Keisha. Basically, you know, if you don't know much about that scenario um, or that show, it talks about Keisha Cole being adopted. Um, her mom was, you know, on substances, so she couldn't take care of her kids. Uh, she had like eight or nine kids. She had a whole lot of kids, like a gaggle of kids. Um, thank you. So where I film my show is actually like a room. It's like a, a clear window. So anytime you see me like looking and like, I'm trying to be respectful of people when they say something to me. But anyway, um, yeah, Keisha Ko, I know you've been through a lot, but sis, you got to grow up. You have to. You're a mess. I mean, you're not that damn messy because Keisha Ko, one thing about her, she does her business, but she's not really like someone, like, she's not someone that she'll, she's not someone who runs after the cameras. You know what I mean? She's not trying to be on every tabloid, not that those exist anymore, like a shade room or a neighborhood talk. She don't care about that. You know what I mean? She just living her life, living her ghetto life, and people just pick up on him. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not against the age. I'm not against the ghettoness, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm against the humiliation. You know what I mean? I hate when women are humiliated. I hate when anybody's humiliated, but especially women, because I'm a lady. So, um, yeah, I want the best for Miss Keisha, but Miss Keisha seemed like she don't want the best for herself. And I'm not here to push nobody to do nothing they don't want to do. I'm a supporter in any and everything people do, as long as it's safe and it's not harming me or yourself, but mostly me. Okay. Do what you want to do. Do better, but do better. Moving on to the one and only Zeri, the diddler. <laughs> I must say, 2024 has been a wild year. It's been so wild. I mean, from the time Cat Williams sat on Shannon's tick tongue shop seat to now, it's it's a wild year. And yeah. Yeah, 2024, it's a lot. But hopefully 2025 is going to prepare us for whatever it needs to prepare us for. Because this is like, it's been a lot, it's like limbo, you know. And I don't like living in limbo. But as life has it, that's what we're dealing with right now. So Diddy just had a birthday. I think he just turned 55 this past week. I don't know. I don't keep up with the man. Um, but anyway, you, you know, he's still in the slammer. He's still in jail. Um, not prison yet, but jail. And his kids called him to, like, sing him, like, a happy birthday. And his youngest child, who's one years old, I believe, was singing him a happy birthday. And it's just so crazy because it's like there's two sides being, like, played out in public. It's the side that we just discover of him. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If you, like, are a big fan of Wendy Williams, which I've been listening to Wendy Williams since, since I've been small, like, I don't know if you guys are native New Yorkers, but she used to be on um, the radio. And when she was on the radio, she was wild. She used to say some crazy stuff. But anyway, she been saying that Diddy was a hot goddamn mess. Man, Wendy William, where are you, bitch? We need you. We need you. We need you to recount stories. Tell us some more stuff that you have up your sleeve and call it a day. But anyway, shout outs to the one and only queen. But um, y'all can never make me hate Wendy. Never. But, yeah. So, like I said, we have two sides playing out in public. We have the side that we just discover where he's abusing people. And, you know, basically they, he has a RICO charge. And then we have the side where he's the family man. He's always, you know, cheering about the people that... I'm sorry, having the people that he loves around him. Now, to see him in this predicament... It's kind of wild. Like, in one aspect, I'm looking at the video like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Look at that little baby. But then on the other side, I'm just like, besides the baby, like a literal baby, look at the other babies, like his other kids. Like, they're, and I have to, I must give it to them because we're all talking about it, unfortunately. But I have to give it to them. They're keeping a good poker face or a good facade you know they're still going outside even though they don't have to but they're still going outside they're making it know that you know we're not going to be held up by these charges that our da dad is accused of right um but again I feel like with some of his kids there's no reading the room and maybe that should be impl they keep implementing that but um yeah that's I guess that's all I have to say. It's going to be quick. Kamala lost. 
Donnie is back. And that's okay. But anyway, as always, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And also comment below. Thank you.